This is a video that, after many attempts to edit it years ago, I ultimately gave up on and never finished. But following Anthony Bourdain's death, I felt a desire to try again. This is my looking back on a trip that takes place five years ago. Before I left America in 2012 to study abroad in Japan for one year, I had already studied the Japanese language and the culture, and I knew a lot of what to expect when I got there. So even though I had already lived in Japan for almost a year at the time that this video takes place, I don't really think I had ever left my comfort zone until the day I decided to take a trip to Taipei. So my friend had invited me on a three-day weekend trip to Taipei, and I booked the ticket last minute. Our flight was to depart at 6 a.m. in the morning, so we had to spend the night in the airport. That night in Kansai International Airport, I walked through the empty terminals looking for a spot where the Wi-Fi would be strong enough that I could watch Anthony Bourdain's The Layover Taipei episode. We would spend much of that weekend following in his footsteps. Of all the times that Anthony Bourdain's work inspired my own travels, this trip was the one that changed me the most. Our first stop was a legendary restaurant in Taipei called Din Tai Fung. The famous dish here is Xiao Wang Bao, affectionately called Pillows of Happiness by Mr. Bourdain. And I couldn't agree more. In fact, I think this may be my favorite restaurant in the entire world. I came back here again with my American friend in 2015 because it was that good. So after Din Tai Fung, logically, the very next thing we did was, yep, eat again. Street food is everywhere in Taipei. It's cheap and it's good. <laughs> Apart from the street food, you can also find produce markets and the like selling fresh food in open storefronts. And no way am I going to forget to mention bubble tea. This is a topic that deserves a video all its own. But let it suffice to say that these concoctions of tea-infused beverages with squishy textures and sweet, fruity flavorings first surfaced here in Taiwan in the 1980s, and they're still ubiquitous today. And here at Coco begins the love affair with bubble tea. <laughs> Let's go. Later that evening, we wandered the local night markets. Kana was looking for one dish in particular that I wasn't exactly keen to try. Oyster omelets. I didn't like this particular one, but I had a much better one later. Luckily, there's no shortage of options, and the second meal is usually only a few steps away. We were beat after a long day, but this singing gentleman really brightened our moods again. I think Kana especially really liked him. The next day, we took a trip out of Taipei. Kana wanted to visit Houdong, a place often called Cat Village. The Japanese found coal here decades ago, 
So for a long time, there wasn't much fun to be had here. But now, the feline takeover has become a tourist attraction. This neat bridge takes you from the train station up to the side of the mountain. I liked the lazy peacefulness of this place and exploring all the hidden alleys. I'm not a cat guy at all. But the cats here are pretty docile, I guess. All right, fine. They're cute. Next up was Joe Fun, a scenic place said to inspire the anime film masterpiece Spirited Away. When you walk through the narrow streets, it is easy to see why. There is a ton to shop and explore here, but I didn't get a lot of footage, so you'll have to go see it yourself. Despite the narrow streets, you'll have people riding motorized scooters making their way through. This seems to be a thing in Taiwan, so do watch out. The view from the top alone is enough to make the trip worth it. Hey look, it's the shot from the beginning of this video. Our next destination was straight out of the layover. The epic Keelong Night Market, where we'd once again follow in Tony's footsteps. This was a very special dish that I hoped I would be able to track down. There's another seafood dish I gotta try a few stalls down. There's some bad boys right here. Oh yeah, that looks good. Yeah, let's get some of those. Miniature hard shell crab, fried whole, spiced and served in a paper cup, and crunchy delicious. That's absolutely awesome. Why? Come on. That was awesome. Yeah. Just like a very famous man once said. Looks like perfect ballpark food. Mm. The seasoning's also really good. It's got like a mixture of pepper and something else, kind of like the seasoning you'd put on a steak fry. It's really good. And just like that, our short trip in Taiwan was coming to an end. After a balmy lunch and stroll through the local market the next day, our flight would be waiting to take us back to a more predictable world. So, what did it all mean? Why make this video now? For me, this trip was one of those critical moments in life after which nothing would ever be the same. A rewiring of the brain, a scrambling of the DNA. In three days, I went from only wanting to stay where I was comfortable to feeling like I can and should go anywhere. I would have taken the trip even without Anthony Bourdain's guidance, but it was he who assured me that it was going to be fun. 
He changed my mindset going into it and brought me to some of the best culinary experiences in my life. Now that he's gone, I want to tell these stories as much as I can. It is incumbent on all of us who he inspired to keep exploring the world and not let that inspiration fade away.